Okay, well, this is a test of the Fuji GFX 100S, the Sony A7S 3 the Canon R3, and the Nikon Z9. The Canon, the Nikon, and the Sony are each using their own respective 50mm f1.2 prime lens. As for the Fuji, the best one that there is is the 80mm 1.7. That is the closest you can get to 50mm on a uh, medium format for Fuji right now. Um, there are ones that get better and closer to 50 millimeter, but their aperture is way higher, like f4, sometimes f2.8, which is still way off from 1.2. But this is the closest that we can get with it, so here we go. Now, what we're going to do first is a focusing test on a moving subject, so I'm just going to simply walk toward the camera lens and go from there. So here we go. I'm going to walk nice and slow. and go from there. So here we go. I'm going to walk nice and slow. And go from there. So here we go. I'm going to walk nice and slow. And go from there. So here we go. I'm going to walk nice and slow. Um, most of them, their minimum focal distance is uh, farther than this, but uh, we'll try the Sony first. So I'm going to go really, 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 really close to the, uh, the Sony so you can see when and where it loses focus. Okay. Now the Fuji, I know, is quite a bit farther away, I believe. So we're going to walk closer to the Fuji now. Okay. Now the Nikon. Now I haven't even tested this lens. I just took it out of the... Case it just arrived today, and hopefully that's okay. And now the Canon. It's really cool seeing the iris move in there. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to turn away. The reason for this is all of them have face detection, and obviously it's not going to be able to see my face, so I want to see what it's like when it's moving uh, and focusing on a subject that is looking away, not at them. So... Same thing, we're going to walk away, same speed. Now, ideally, I would like to do this test outside in the sunlight. I just got brand new lights in here, so it's actually very bright in here. Let's go ahead and do another walk toward the cameras again. Okay. Same thing, we're going to walk away, same speed. Now, ideally, I would like to do this test outside in the sunlight. I just got brand new lights in here, so it's actually very bright in here. Let's go ahead and do another walk toward the cameras again. Okay. Same thing, we're going to walk away, same speed. Now, ideally, I would like to do this test outside in the sunlight. I just got brand new lights in here, so it's actually very bright in here. Let's go ahead and do another walk toward the cameras again. Okay. Same thing, we're going to walk away, same speed. Now, ideally, I would like to do this test outside in the sunlight. I just got brand new lights in here, so it's actually very bright in here. Let's go ahead and do another walk toward the cameras again. Okay. Walking away again. Walking away again. Walking away again. Walking away again. So most of them at this point, this is pretty far away. It probably won't detect my face on any of them, more than likely. Um, yeah. Let's walk close one more time. Okay. Let's walk close one more time. OK. 
Okay, let's walk close one more time. Okay, let's walk close one more time. Okay, let's try the focusing again one more time just to see if it was a fluke or not. So we're gonna go nice and slow. Okay, now the Fuji, I'll give it its best shot here. The Nikon. And the Canon. Okay, so that concludes day one's test. Um, whenever the weather gets better, I'll take them outside and try this again and go from there. This isn't very scientific. I'm just getting, I have a 50 millimeter F1.2 for each of the cameras. So, yep, um, hopefully that uh, kind of helps you guys decide which is best. And frankly, in my opinion, I still really like the Sony. Um, its low light capability means more to me than any of the other cameras. The Canon is fantastic for like sports and motion and stuff. Its ability to, even in very high noise environments, um, and by noise I mean you know, image quality noise, um, its ability to pull usable, great looking images is unmatched by the other ones. Um, the Fuji, I am, I realize that it's meant for like studio light photography and large landscape nature photography where your subject is not moving and you have time to manually focus in and stuff. You will more than likely notice, I haven't even obviously been through the footage yet, but uh, the Fuji has a very tough time tracking accurately. Even with still images of uh, people doing portraits, I've had to, I found myself having to manually go to the M mode, the manual focus mode, and using the artificial zoom in to make sure it's as sharp as possible. That's the only way I can get reliable, sharp shots with it, which isn't the greatest, but uh, I'm still going to keep the Fuji because I love doing like architectural shots and everything like that. The Fuji is unmatched for that. It's 102 megapixel, uh, I'm going to say 102 megapixel sensor um, is insane. And being able to pixel shift and jump it up to 408 megapixels, absolutely insane. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy editing this and seeing which is best because I'm going to be seeing this for the first time as well. So.